So in chapter 10, we looked at gases, and now in chapter 11, we're going to talk about liquids and intermolecular forces. So the states of matter, so those are like solids, liquids, or gases, um, you, can really, you can really think about the difference between them is how far apart the particles are from each other. So gases, so here's a little picture over here, gases, uh, the molecules are really, really far apart from each other, they're moving around. Uh, and they're, they're spread out a lot. And then solids and liquids are a lot closer together. So solids and liquids, we call those condensed phases of matter. Um, so what's really the difference? What, what, are, what are the different properties of solids, liquids, and gases and, and their particle um, distances? So gases, you, now this is stuff you've learned in like probably like second grade. Gases, um, they expand to fill their entire container. So they're going to take the volume of the container. They'll take the shape of the container. Um, they, so they expand to fill their container. They're compressible, right? You can have compressed gas and kind of like squish all the molecules together. You can let it expand. Um, gases will flow readily and uh, diffusion occurs pretty quickly when you have um, in a gas, within a gas. Liquids, on the other hand, um, liquids will assume the shape. So they take the shape of the container, but their volume is fixed. So in this picture, you can see you have like a, a spherical container here. So the liquid's gonna take the shape of this container. But if you took that and you poured it into like a square container um, and you had 50 mils in the, in, the, in the circular container, you would throw 50 mils in the um, square container, but now it, the shape would be different. So the volume stays the same, the, like the amount of substance that you have, it's still gonna stay the same. Um, the, the volume is the same, but the, um, the shape would be different. So gases, right, the molecules actually expand to kind of fill up so their volume can, can change depending on whatever the shape of the container is. But liquids, that volume is going to be the same. Uh, the shape will, um, the, will depend on whatever the container is. And solids will keep their own shape and their volume so they don't take the shape or volume of the container. They don't expand to fill their container either. Um, you can't really compress it. They're, they're already compressed and they don't flow very easily, and diffusion is going to be pretty slowly. It's going to occur slowly. So those are just some, some differences between solids, liquids, and gases. Um, and so a state of a, of a particular substance, so whether you have a solid, liquid, or gas, is really going to depend on, on two things um, at a particular temperature and pressure, two different kind of forces that are acting against each other. That's what antagonistic means. They're acting against each other. Um, so temperature, really, that's like temperature... Um, if you remember from, from chapter 10, we're talking about temperature, how it's related to kinetic energy, like how much energy do these molecules have. So they're moving around at high temperature. Things have a lot. Um, they're moving around a lot faster. They have a higher average kinetic energy. And so they're going to have enough energy to break apart from each other. Um, so if you give um, a, you know, a liquid enough um, energy, it's going to turn into a gas, right? That's how we boil things. They break the forces that are holding them together. You give them enough energy to rip those the forces apart, and now you get a gas. And so by rip it apart, I don't mean breaking these like covalent bonds between you know the within the intramolecular uh, bonds. It's the ones the intermolecular forces, so the forces that are holding like this molecule to that molecule. If you give that enough, if you give the the system enough energy, then these molecules will have enough energy to move around and break apart from each other, and that's how you can go from a liquid to a gas or from a solid to a liquid. So that's where how you get melting. That's how you get um, evaporation. Even things um, increasing the temperature, temperature is going to give them more kinetic energy. Um, the other one is the strength of the attractions between the particles. So the molecules are going to be attracted to each other. Uh, and so and we'll talk about three different forces that kind of hold molecules together, uh, how they're attracted to each other. And so the stronger those forces are, the more likely you are to have a solid. So there's this, you're trying to find this balance between like forcing the molecules to be close together and having, giving them enough energy to pull them apart. So if you, you know, increase the pressure, you're kind of forcing the molecules to be together. So at high pressure, um, you're going to compact those molecules. They're going to get tighter. You're more likely to have a solid. But if you give them a lot of energy at higher temperatures, you're going to have, you're be more likely to be a, um, to be a gas. So we can start looking at those intermolecular forces in the next uh, section.